Hi there, thanks very much for coming to Mr C Science Teacher. Today we're looking at convection, that's the way that heat moves through liquids and gases. First step with any flipped lesson is to watch the video and make some good notes that you can use when you get back to class. Remember, when you make notes you've got to think about the purpose, the audience and the form. Next step in watching a flipped video is once you've watched it and made the notes, to write a summary. Make sure you summarise what you've learned, not just what the video was about. I have learned that. And also you're going to have some questions to ask. Think for a minute, spend some time, put some effort in and think some questions that you can ask. If you didn't understand something, I'm not sure about, why does this happen? If you think you've understood it all, think a bit further beyond. What if? What would happen? Or what happens when? Okay, today we're looking at heat convection. At the basic level you need to understand that heat can move through liquids and gases by convection. As you climb up the level ladder we're looking at introducing more explanation and using the particle model. Let's go. Okay, quick recap on what we did in the last lesson. We were thinking about solids, liquids and gases and we looked at the properties and structures and because of the strong bonds in a solid we found out that solids can conduct heat if you heat up one part, give heat energy to some particles, they vibrate faster, they bash into their neighbours and they push and pull with the strong forces and eventually the heat energy gets passed on. So that's why conduction happens in solids. Now liquids and, so and gases don't have such strong forces between their particles. Because the forces are not strong, okay, weak in a liquid and they're not there in a gas, it means they can't conduct heat. Conduction doesn't happen in liquids and gases in the same way. So there must be some other way that heat can be transferred and that's what we're going to find out about. Okay, let's have a quick think about it. Before I actually show you the basics of it, I actually want to, to go on and have a look and we'll see why we're here and where we are. Okay, if I move this cam You see, we're actually in ta -da, the kitchen. Now, on the hob, there's a Christmas card, and I've cut this Christmas card up. I've cut it into a spiral. So if I pull this string, da -da -da, okay, is the spiral. Now, a little bit stuck. There we go. So I've hung this paper spiral up there above the hob. Let's turn on the gas and see what happens. There's the gas. Oop. And straight away, can you see what's happening with the spiral? Now, I think you should all know this. Everyone's got some idea that hot air rises. You might also know this, that cold air sinks. Let's think what happens if you look in a room. Above the heater we've got hot air rising. Now that hot air is rising up because it's been heated by the radiator. And you might know if you've got a poster above a radiator, when the heating comes on the poster starts to flutter. You might know it's cold down here beneath the window because the air that's been cooled by the cold window sinks down and you'll find it's lying here is the coldest part of the room. Now that makes something called a convection current which takes the heat around the room. Here we go. Hot air rises, warmed up by the heater, it rises up to the top, might cool down, sink back down again, where it'll go in contact with the heater and it gets heated up again. So you have a convection current which takes the heat energy from the cold bottom to the top. So the heater then, the heat from the heater is taken to the top of the room. The hot air rises and takes heat energy with it. A similar process happens in liquids as well. Think about a pan of water. Hot water rises up where it's heated and the cold water then sinks down. Now you will see this if you've got lots of pasta in the pan, you'll see as it churns round and round in the middle where it's been heated up by, the, by the, the flames, by the hob, 
the pasta rises up with the water and it sinks down at the edges and you can get sometimes in spaghetti a swirly pattern and it's caused by the convection currents, it's showing you the convection currents. So the hot water rises up and it takes heat energy from the bottom where it's being heated by the flames right the way through the liquid it rises up to the top. Let's try and work out why hot air rises. Let's have a look at a simulation. Here we go, here's the simulation. Going to heat up this gas. Watch it expand. Take a closer look. The gas particles haven't changed shape or size. They're just bouncing so fast, they're getting really, really far apart. Expansion. No. Okay, so the key there was this. The heat energy makes the particles move around faster. When they're moving faster, they bash into each other with more energy and they push each other further apart. So the hot air then takes up more space and it becomes less dense because the same amount of air is taking up more space. Because it's become less dense, it means it's going to float up through the colder air which is more dense. Let's think about liquids. Let's have a look at the sim for liquids. Here we go. Going to warm up the liquid. Move the Bunsen burner. Here we go. It's expanding all right. What's happening is that the heat makes the particles move faster and faster and get further and further apart. As the particles take up more space, the liquid expands. That's basically how a thermometer works. The hotter it is, the further the liquid expands up the tube and the higher the temperature reads. It's so simple. It's genius. Okay, let's think about liquids then. It's a very similar process. The heat energy makes the particles move about faster. Because they're moving about faster, they collide with more energy, push each other further apart, okay, and that means that the hot water becomes less dense. It takes up more space for the same amount of water, same number of molecules take up more space less dense and it floats up to the top. So the key factor here is the expansion and it's caused by the faster movement of the molecules. So, if we have a think about what's happening in solids, liquids and gases, we've now seen that liquids and gases can transfer heat by convection. The particles move faster, push each other further apart, the hot liquid and the hot gas becomes less dense and it rises up to the top. This can't happen in a solid though, because remember in a solid we've got strong forces that means the particles are fixed in their positions and even though they can vibrate around faster, they can't change places. So the hot ones can't change places and rise up in convection. It has to happen by conduction. No convection in solids. Here's a summary. key point, the atoms push each other further apart when they get hot and it means the hot gas or liquid expands. Because it's less dense, it's going to float up and the cold gas or the cold liquid sinks. And that sets up your convection current and that means the heat energy is taken from the top to the bottom as the hot liquid rises up or the hot gas rises up. But it can't happen in solids because the particles have got fixed positions. Thanks for watching the video. That's all for the lesson. Quick check at your objectives. Make sure that your notes are adequate and your summary is adequate to help you rise up through this uh, level ladder. And remember, when you're coming into class, I'm going to be looking at your notes and I also want you to write some questions. Thanks very much.